Good evening. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church tonight. Let's all get a songbook, stand and turn to page 32. house on this Wednesday night. Good to see you all here this evening. And thank the Lord for the good week already that he's given us. And praying that God will continue to bless the remainder of the week. And looking toward the Lord's day coming. Amen. And we're thankful for all that the Lord has done. And uh, so as we pray tonight, let's do remember uh, those tonight that are sick among the church. Uh, continue to pray for Brother Melvin. And uh, I talked to him this afternoon and he said he's just still real sore, but uh, doing a little better. Thankful for that, amen. And so just continue to pray for him as he recovers from the surgery. Uh, that God will continue to meet every need there in his life. Brother Marvin Robertson, remember him in prayer. And uh, remember all the others that are sick tonight, that God will touch them. Pray for our school. We're three weeks from tomorrow is our last day. Of course, the kids sense of the end is near and it's getting uh, getting a little a little uh, exciting amen, <laughs> for everybody but uh, but I think the teachers are more excited than the students are but uh, we appreciate uh, all the Lord's doing so pray for our school and our staff this week is uh, teacher appreciation week and we certainly do appreciate our staff here at the school all of our teachers and what they do Pray for them, amen. That God will continue to bless and help them and meet every need in their lives. Let's remember our missionaries and uh, praying for them tonight. And uh, let's pray for one another. Any other requests?
any others. Let's pray for revival. Got a revival coming up Lord willing on Monday. And I talked to Brother Scott yesterday. They're excited about it. Looking forward to being here. And I'm excited about it. Uh, just be much in prayer. This week, invite folks, tell folks about the meeting, call people, talk to them, let them know about it. Amen. Uh, pray much about revival. everybody can and will let's gather around the altar tonight if you can't kneel we we'll invite you to come and sit on the front pew let's just gather around as close as we can and pray and just thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy his grace and for helping us amen and so let's do pray for one another tonight remember all the lost tonight amen and our families that God will deal with their hearts I certainly love to see some folk get saved, amen. And so let's do pray. The lost souls, and God will convict their hearts, and they'll get right with the Lord.
God, in a great way. What a blessing they are to us. And, Lord, we watch them and hear them as they sing. And, Lord, as we see them serving you, thank you, God. Please have your way now here tonight. Touch this service. God, touch your word to our hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Tonight, again, it's good to see you here in the service. If you have your Bible tonight, I want you to turn to the book of Genesis, chapter number one. Genesis, chapter number one. And uh, while you're turning to Genesis, chapter one, be sure to pick up uh, a revival flyer and get it out this week after next week they won't be any good so get the word out take one home with you that way it reminds you to pray for the meeting uh, that's coming up amen and, uh, looking forward to it also this year we're going to be doing something different uh, we're going to start an Vance County camp meeting in uh, December usually when they have the meeting at Forest Hills in December already got the McGregor Hall for the old and uh, Brother Scott he's going to be moderating it uh, there'll be different ones coming in preaching Brother C.T. Townsend will be coming one night Brother Jared Dixon Brother Joe Arthur and we'll be having at the uh, McGregor Hall Monday through Thursday night and uh, it's already paid for it somebody's already paid for it Twenty two hundred and fifty bucks to rent it for the week, and uh, that was the discount for the church. And, but somebody's already paid for it, so that's taken care of. And so we're looking forward to it. Brother Scott sent me a picture yesterday. He's got the flyers printed up. He'll be bringing some with him 
next week. So I want you to put that on your calendar. And it's, I think it's the first full week of December. I think it's like the 5th or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Uh, just put that in your mind to start thinking about it and make a uh, prayer, uh, note of prayer about it. And uh, looking forward to it. Amen. Trusting that God will start something here in Vance County. And uh, God will give revival. We need revival. And the only hope our county, the only hope our state, the only hope our country is God. Is God. And uh, if God don't do something, it ain't going to get no better. Well, of course, we know it ain't going to get no better, but I believe God can stir his people and save precious souls. And uh, if we can have revival. So uh, make that a matter of prayer as well. We'll be saying more about it uh, on down the road. But just want to put a little bug in your ear so you can kind of get that on your calendar. And then on Friday night, uh, the Lord willing, on that Friday night, they're going to have a uh, uh, Christmas concert. Brother uh, Andy, what's his last name? He plays the fiddle with the Rochesters a lot. I can't think of it. I can't think of it. But anyway. They're going to have a, a Christmas concert on Friday night. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. It'll be good. I know it'll be good. It'll be good preaching anyway. I know that. Brother C.T., uh, Brother Joe, and uh, Brother Jared Dixon. And uh, so we're, uh, we're, I'm excited about it. Looking forward to what, what God's going to do uh, through the Vance County Camp Meeting. In Genesis chapter number 1 tonight, I want to begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says in verse number 1 of Genesis 1, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to light up, to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God called and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. 
and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after the, his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over li every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree-yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Look, let's read just a little bit of chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all of his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege we have to be here in your house. Thank you, Lord, for your word tonight that God gives us clear understanding, dear Lord, of all that you have created and all that you have done. And Lord, we believe that just what the Bible has said to us tonight. Lord, we believe it just like it has been written down. And Father, I pray tonight that you would stir in our hearts and God minister in our hearts and help us as we study your word this evening. Thank you again, God, for the privilege to be here. Thank you for everyone in the building tonight. Bless our young people as they meet as, meet as well. And God, may your will be done. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach tonight uh, from uh, not all of these verses, but I read all of these verses uh, uh, just to get an idea of the greatness of God. Amen. Now, I want you to notice in, in the very first verse of the Bible that it starts out and it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I have no problem tonight believing that. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind, in my heart, that that's exactly how the heaven and the earth got here. God created it. Amen. And everything else that he did in these verses that we have read, I believe it just like the Bible says it. Amen. I'm not a, I'm not a monkey believer. Say amen right there. I, I mean, listen, it would take more faith for me to believe that than it just believe in what God said. And I'm glad, amen, that we have a clear uh, rendition of exactly what happened, how this world got here, how you and I got here, and it's all by a creative act of Almighty God. Now, last Wednesday night, we started a, a study on the getting to know God through his names, and he's got... His name means something, and it gives a specific characteristic of, uh, uh, about him. Now, tonight, the first one I want to look at is found here in verse number one and, and is used many, many times throughout the Bible, where the Bible said, in the beginning, God, amen. The name of God, in the beginning, God. And the name for God in this verse is the name Elohim. Elohim, amen. 
And we know that that name means the all-powerful one. And that's the reason I wanted to read these verses about creation because there's only one that could have done all of that, and that is God, amen, the all-powerful one, the creator, amen, and it all refers to God's great power. This word appears 32 times in Genesis and more than 2,500 times throughout the Bible. Our God is the only true God, truly pow only powerful God, truly omnipotent God, and that is our God. And his name is Elohim, amen, which means all-powerful. I'm glad tonight he's got all power, amen. He has all power, and there's no one more powerful than he. Exodus chapter 8 and verse number 10, and he said tomorrow, and he said, be it according to thy word that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. There's none like our God, amen. I mean, there's a lot of false gods. There's a lot of people worshiping false gods. But the Bible said there is none like unto the Lord our God. Exodus chapter 15 and verse number 11 says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Amen. And so tonight I just want to just zero in for a few minutes on God's name about being all-powerful. I believe that tonight, don't you? I believe he's got all power. I believe he can do anything. I don't believe there's nothing impossible with God. And the reason being is because he's almighty God. He's all omnipotent God, all-powerful. Amen. And so I'm glad tonight, and we can see that in different ways. First of all, we can see his power in his words, in God's words, amen. And we can see that in the verses that we've read here in Genesis chapter 1, and especially verses 1 through 13, when the Bible said that God said, let there be, and there was. I mean, there's nothing more powerful than the word of God. When God speaks, things happen, amen? And we can see that power in his name and in his words. Psalm 33 and verse number 6, the Bible says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Amen. When God said it, look at it if you will. Look at verse number three. And God said, what did he say? Let there be light. What happens? Light appeared. When he spoke, he did. Amen. His word is powerful. And verse number six, and God said, let there be a firmament. Guess what happened? There was a firmament. And uh, we find that God said in verse number nine, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together. And guess what happened? The waters gathered together. Amen. I mean, listen, in verse number 11, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and all the herb yielding seed. What happened? It brought forth just like God said. There's power in the word of God. And we know that the world was made by the breath of his mouth. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 10. And verse number 12, the Bible said, He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. I mean, listen, he made the world with his power. He spoke and the world came into existence. Amen? Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse number 15. The Bible said he hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. 
the very Word of God brought into existence uh, the light, the firmament, the bodies of water, the dry land, the grass, the trees, uh, and at the completion of all of that, uh, the Bible said that God saw that it was good, and all he had to do was just speak. Amen? I mean, he's all-powerful. He's omnipotent, uh, and his Word is uh, powerful. And so we can see his name and the, and the meaning of his name just in his words because of his power and what he is able to do. But not only God's words, but secondly, we see his power in God's works. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 27. In verse number 14, we see a transition from things being spoke into existence to God making or forming the creation. Think about the work of God. And tonight can I say that his work is perfect. Amen. I mean, listen, only God can stand back after he did something and say, it's good. Hey, and if God does something, it's good. Amen. And you can't discredit it because it is good. Amen. He can't do nothing but good. And we can see his power in his works. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse number 4 tells us he is the rock. His work is perfect. Praise God. Listen, when God does something, it's perfect because he's perfect. Amen. You and I, we can do the best we can do, but even at our best, we still have imperfection, don't we? I mean, but God's ways are perfect. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Psalmist says in Psalms 40 and verse number 5, Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee, if I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. The psalmist said, Lord, everything you've done, if we could count them up, if we could start naming them uh, uh, one by one, he said, they are more than we can number. There's more, thank God, that he's done that we don't even realize or understand. But I'm glad he's powerful, amen. And he spoke this world into existence. When God said, let there be something, there was something. And when God made something, it was good, amen. And it was perfect. We can see his power, his name, Elohim. It means all powerful. It means the creator. It means omnipotence. Amen. God's words, God's works. But then notice, we can see it in God's way. Now we can see it in an example, I believe, of Moses. In Exodus chapter number 6 and verse number 1, the Bible said, Then the Lord said unto Moses, now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Now God said to Moses, you just watch what I'm getting ready to do. I'm going to do something. You're not even going to be able to understand it, but I'm going to do something that Pharaoh is going to drive those people out of his land. You see, God has a way in his power to work in people's lives. Praise God. Aren't you glad that you and I are not out of his reach? Amen. I'm glad I wasn't out of his reach when I was lost, and I'm glad I'm in the, I'm in the family tonight, and I'm not out of his reach and not out of his sight. And so he tells Moses, you, now you shall see what I will do with Pharaoh. In verse number 3 of chapter 7 of the book of Exodus, he says, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. God says, I'm going to show Pharaoh. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show all the Egyptians. I'm going to show all of my people. And they're going to see, amen, all what wonders will be done in the land of Egypt. He said, I will do these things and you're going to see it. Then in Exodus chapter number 14 
And verse number 8, And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen, his army, and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Pharaoh before Belzephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, listen to what Moses said, Fear not, fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Isn't it amazing that just prior to all of this and them being brought out of the land of Egypt, all they did was cry and, and cry to Moses, cry unto the Lord for all the heartache and, and all the hard work and the, and the bad way that they had it down in Egypt. But now they're out and they said, you should have just left us. We'd have been glad to stay. That ain't the tune they were singing earlier, amen. But Moses said, just stand still. You're going to see what the Lord is going to do. Just wait on God. And God is going to show you something. You're going to see the Lord work. Just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians that you have seen today, you will see no more. Hallelujah. He said the Lord's going to fight for you. I'm glad God does fight for his people. Amen. Hallelujah. God, he works in ways that sometimes we might not understand. But God's ways are always the best ways. Amen. I mean, when, he was down, when they were in Egypt, God sent those uh, plagues down upon the Egyptians and uh, it just kept hardening the heart of Pharaoh and God said that's what he was going to do. But until finally the blow came to where God sent the death angel over Egypt. And the only thing that was able to spare death from coming to the firstborn of every home was the blood on the doorpost. God brought them out and delivered them through the blood, amen, of the Lamb. And God brought them through the Red Sea. God delivered them completely and drowned Pharaoh's army in the same sea that they crossed on dry ground. I'm glad tonight we can see the power of God in the ways that he works, amen. We can see God in all through the scriptures in God's ways how he works. Think about Elijah. God sent Elijah to the brook. He, <laughs> that may not have made no sense to Elijah, but God told him what he needed to do. Listen, there's a lot of things that might not make sense to us. We may not be able to figure it out, but you forget God's the one that's working in the, behind the scenes. Amen? And when Elijah was in need, God sent him to the brook. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 4 and 5, And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. After the, uh, the, the uh, famine had come and every, all the water sources were drying up, God said, you go to the brook. There you're going to drink water. And then he said, I've commanded the ravens to feed thee there. I've often wondered if, if Elijah had obeyed God would the raven still brought the food in? I believe they probably would. Unless God said, there ain't no need to do it now. He didn't listen to what I told him. Amen. But he went there and God brought what he needed by the ravens. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, I, I don't, 
when you're in need, we don't know how God may meet a need. But it's amazing how God can do it. If need be, he can bring it by the birds. That's what he did for Elijah. When the Lord had need of paying taxes, he told him, go catch a fish. And the first fish that he caught, he said, open its mouth, and there was money in the fish's mouth. He said, go pay your taxes. Amen. Well, that'd be a blessing, wouldn't it? God said, y'all need to go fishing. There's a bunch of money out there in the lake. Y'all need to go gather it up. That'd be all right. But hey, but God worked his, his work and his ways. We can see what God did, and we, we can see that in Elijah. God sent him to the brook. Not only did he send him to the brook, but then God sent him to the barrel. He told him there in 1 Kings chapter 17, he told him to get up and go to Zarephath. And he said that belongs to Zidon. He said, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Isn't that amazing? Wonder why God didn't send it to the rich man's house. But God said, I got a little widow woman down there. She's going to take care of you. Amen. And so he goes and goes to Zarephath. And when he comes to the gate of the city, behold, the woman, uh, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he said unto her, uh, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as he was, she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks. Well, she must not have had too much to cook, only getting two sticks of wood, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. In other words, she said, this is the last bit of meal I got. We're fixing to eat our last meal right here. Well, Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. I mean, isn't it amazing what God did? Here was a woman in need, and God used Elijah to meet the need of this little widow woman and her obedience unto the Lord. And thank God she had what she needed all through the famine. Oh, listen, Elijah's burden would soon be used to be a blessing in the life of somebody else. You know, did you know that sometimes our burdens are a blessing for somebody else? I had somebody that was trying to do something for me one time, and I said, don't do that. And they said, don't rob me of my blessing. God, God forgive me, I don't want to rob nobody of a blessing. Amen? And so we did that. And, and, and God used Elijah to, and the burden that would soon be used to be a blessing to somebody else. That somebody else was that widow woman. Many would say, why go to a poor widow? There's no way that she can do anything to help a situation. You never know what one obedient servant of the Lord can do and what God will do for them. And we can see that in the life of that widow woman. All of this is possible because why? God is all powerful. God can make the waters to stand up on a heap. <laughs> he can divide the Red Sea and where the children of Israel went across on dry ground. I don't believe there was a mud hole when they went across. It says dry ground. Amen. Dry ground means dry ground, I believe. I believe God dried it up. They went through without any problems whatsoever. But what was dry when the Pharaoh's army got in it, God released the waters and drowned every one of them. And on the other side of the river, uh, they were singing songs of victory, amen. On this side, they were burdened. On this side, they were scared. On this side, they were wondering what they were going to do. They actually thought they were going to die on this side. But they saw the hand of God, the all-powerful, the almighty God move in their behalf. And on the other side, praise God, they were singing the songs of Moses. On this side, they were saying, Moses, you have messed up now. You have brought us over here and out here to die. But on the other side, boy, they were singing his praises. 
Isn't that amazing how God can change the situation? Here's a little widow woman. She says, I'm fixing to die. Me and my son, we're going to starve to death. There's no telling how many people had already starved to death during that famine. She may have known people that had starved because of the famine. And she figured that her and her son was going to be the next in line. But the all-powerful, almighty God stepped in and sustained her through the whole famine. Amen. I mean, listen, it didn't make sense to go to such a person to have your life spared. I mean, a lot of things that God does, fleshly, we can't understand it. Fleshly, we don't, it don't make sense to us. But God can do anything, amen? But Elijah had already proved to himself that God is alive, amen, and well able to take care of him at the brook. God had taken care of him. He had brought him the water. He had brought him the food by the ravens every morning and every evening. God had done what he said he would do. And when the brook dried up, he said, move and go to Zarephath. God, he just believed God. God did another miracle. But then God showed for this power not only at the brook, and not only with the barrel, but then also with a bullock. If you will, turn to the book of 1 Kings. I want you to read this tonight. 1 Kings chapter 18. If you get there before I do, hold on. 1 Kings chapter 18. And verse number 17. He'd been to the brook. God met every need. He went to the barrel. God met every need there. Famine's going on. Over three years, a famine has gone on. And uh, problems are widespread. But God proved himself once again. 1 Kings chapter 18, look at verse 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? In other words, Ahab blamed the problems on Elijah. In verse number 18, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. It was sin that had brought uh, the reason of judgment on the land. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450 and the prophets of the groves 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, gathered the, people, the prophets together into Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him, but if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. You know what they were doing? They were still halting between two opinions. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under it. I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on the wood, and put no fire under it, and call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire. Let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves. Dress it first for your many. Call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is take, uh, talking or he is pursuing or he is in a, in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. And they cried aloud, cutting, cut themselves after that manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. I mean, can you imagine this scene? All of these prophets crying out, oh, bell, oh, bell. And then when they didn't answer by noon, I just said, hey, he might be asleep. Wake him up. He could be on a journey. Hey, he may be busy talking to somebody else. 
And so they started cutting themselves with knives and lances till the blood was gushing out upon them. Verse 29, it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, and there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. You know why? Because their God was a dead God. Amen. In verse number 30, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be my, thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water. Pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. He said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar and filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Now they cried all morning long, jumping up and down on the altar, crying, cutting themselves all afternoon, all the way through the afternoon till the time of the evening sacrifice. They had been at it all day long. I'm sure they were exhausted, probably about dead after all their bleeding. And so Elijah gets everything ready and he prays. Someone said 63 words. A simple prayer. <laughs> and verse 38, then what happened? The fire of the Lord fell, consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. What I'm saying tonight is the same word that they're describing unto Him at this very moment. The Lord, He is the God. It's the same God that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. I'm glad tonight he's our God. He, he's the God of the beginning. He's the God of Elijah. He was the God of Moses. I'm glad he was the God of David, but I'm glad he's our God. I'm glad he's as powerful today as he's ever been. He's not lost one iota of his power. Amen. You and I are getting older. We're losing our strength. I'm glad God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm glad he is Elohim. He's the all-powerful one. He's omnipotent, amen. He's all-powerful. I'm saying in that church, we got no reason to hang our head. We got no reason to mumble and cry and whine and complain. Hey, we serve the God of heaven tonight, amen. Hallelujah. We should be falling on our faces and saying, as they did, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. I'm glad tonight he's my God, amen. He's my God. But we can see a little bit about God through his name. The name Elohim means all-powerful. Hallelujah. If God could stand and say, let there be light, don't you think he could make meal come out of a barrel? I do. Amen. Oh, listen. You and I tonight, we serve the God of heaven. Our God is omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's everywhere present. Amen. And he's our God. His name, Elohim, 
creator, the all-powerful one. That's him. Father, I thank you tonight, God, for your word. Lord, thank you for the names of God that describe and ascribe greatness. And oh, what we see in him as the great almighty God. He is Lord of lords. He is king of kings. He is all powerful. And he's our God. Help us tonight, Lord, to trust you and to follow you in your word, in your ways, and all that you do. For God, we know that you're able to help us in our lives. Thank you for your power, Lord, that worked one day in my life and saved me, resurrected me from death unto life. I praise you tonight for that. Bless your people tonight in Jesus' name. While we stand tonight, Brother Chris, how about coming? Can you play a little bit on the piano for us tonight? As he's playing a little bit tonight, maybe just think about how great God is. I mean, our minds really can't fathom how powerful he is. It's amazing. We can see the power of the wind when, it, when it's blowing real strong. And I'll tell you, that wind is powerful. We can see the power of water as it flows over a waterfall, how powerful that it is. I mean, it is powerful enough to turn great turbines to produce energy that we enjoy. But nothing can compare to the power of Almighty God. He's our Elohim, our all-powerful one, our creator, our God. The Lord, He is the God. The Lord be he is the God. Oh, tonight, church, let's just believe God. Amen. The world tries to get our mind and our, our thoughts away from God and more dependent on each other and on ourselves and on the government and on the world. But our dependencies should be on God and nobody else. God can take care of one little widow woman and her son. I believe he can take care of one preacher and his wife. I believe he can take care of you and your family. Amen. Isn't it amazing what God can do? You say it ain't much. She didn't have much. She didn't need, she just got what she needed. Hallelujah. If I got my every time I went to the meal bar and got me enough meal to eat another cake and stay alive, I'd, I'd just be praising God. No doubt she did the same. Father, thank you again. Lord, for this day, for this service tonight, thank you for everyone in the building. Thank you for our young people. Bless them. Bless the remainder of the week before us, Father. God, we look towards Sunday as we celebrate Mother's Day. Oh, God, that you'd meet with us. Save precious souls. Send revival in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you being here uh, in the service tonight. Be sure to pick up one of the revival flyers back there on the side of the sound booth. And uh, be much in prayer for revival starting Monday night. And uh, don't forget to pick up a call to glory for the month of May. And uh, that'll be a great help to you. Uh, a little devotion every day. Get you started reading your Bible. Give you a little kickstart, amen. And uh, that'll be good. And then, of course, Sunday Mother's Day. And uh, we'll look forward to celebrating all the moms that will be here in the service on Sunday morning. And uh, so be much in prayer that God will touch hearts and lives and then there'll not be a service Sunday night. And uh, so hopefully you can spend time with your family, make a day of it. And uh, I tell you, we better make as much of it as we can. Amen. Yet tomorrow night, all the moms, ladies, and daughters are invited to ribeyes at uh, 6 o'clock. Going, just be there by six, and I think they got some, some things they're going to try to do games, prizes, gifts, something. I don't know what all they're going to do. They're going to do something. It'll be fun. Just to have a good time, fellowship, uh, get you something to eat, amen, and uh, just have a good time together. So that's tomorrow night, six o'clock, ribeyes. If you don't know where that's at, that's over there, over the silo used to be. It's called silo, and uh, but I'm sure everybody knows.
But anyhow, make plans to go tomorrow night if you can. Pray much for the uh, services Sunday. And I uh, hope you have a good rest of the week. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands with one. Thank you.